Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Pack a Day podcast. Happy Sunday. Hope you're enjoying a great weekend, staying safe, staying healthy. Appreciate you joining me as always. Got a fun ish episode. Maybe it's a dumb ish episode, dependent upon your take on it. But uh, my mind works very, very weird for those of you who haven't experienced it already. And sometimes I just like doing weird exercises with the Packers roster. And I figured I would do one of those with the, uh, with you today, uh, just for fun, because it's what, Sunday, June 6th, and there's not much else going on. We got mini camp coming up next week. And that'll, of course, I'm sure take up uh, a huge portion of the conversation this, this next week. But yeah, it's Sunday. Let's have some fun. So what I decided to do today was go over the Packers roster in a situation where free agency and trades weren't a thing, right? So basically the only way you can build your roster is via the draft and undrafted free agency. And once you acquire one of those players, they stay on your team forever unless you let them go and so on and so forth. So first of all, of course, it doesn't work this way. Number two, of course, it's dumb because the butterfly effect takes place. And if you have really good players at one position, I'll just use an example here, Corey Lindsley and JC Treader at center. Of course, you're not going to draft Josh Myers in the second round, you know, and so on and so forth. So I fully get that. But the reason it's a fun exercise is it just kind of gives you a look of over the last decade, which positions have the Packers drafted well at and developed well at, and which positions have they had to kind of rely on free agency and such. So it's not necessarily so much an exercise just to like do it for the sake of doing it. It does kind of give you an insight to say, all right, here's where the Packers have prioritized their picks and their development of players and undrafted free agents. And here's where they've really had to supplement with free agency and trades and things like that. So let's go over it. I have my 53-man roster. Uh, if Green Bay was just keeping their their free or their own players and undrafted free agents, so at quarterback, of course you've got Aaron Rodgers, you've got Tim Boyle, you've got Jordan Love. Those are your three quarterbacks. There may be one missing there, which I'll get to in just a moment. But uh, ultimately, things don't change that much. You know, maybe you can make the argument of you know if they have Rodgers and Jordan Love, maybe they don't need Tim Boyle. You could use that roster spot elsewhere. But darn it, this is my 53-man roster and you can bet Tim Boyle is going to be on that roster. Also, he's just, a, in my opinion, a good quarterback, and you can never have enough of those on the roster. At running back, you have sort of an embarrassment of riches a little bit here. You've got Aaron Jones. Uh, of course, you've got AJ Dillon. You still have Jamal Williams, and you also have a Ty Montgomery, and that's not even including players like Kylan Hill, Dexter Williams, and so on and so forth. So obviously, you'd have a ton of competition in mini camp, training camp, etc. but a, a, a group of four of Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, Jamal Williams, and Ty Montgomery all who are literally a different flavor of running back, right? Aaron Jones is more your overall running back and do a little of everything. Dylan's more your power guy. Jamal Williams, more your pass protector, you know, a little bit more of the receiver check down screen guy. And then Ty Montgomery is more of your, you know, you know, receiving back, right? Your third down running back, able to, you know, motion out wide, play in the slot, probably would have worked out very well in a Matt LaFleur system. So uh, a really nice embarrassment of riches there. And then of course, Montgomery can return some kicks and do some of that stuff for you as well. You know, maybe he just should uh, take a knee when he's supposed to take a knee, but neither here nor there. Wide receivers, uh, of course, you have, again, you have Ty Montgomery who can kick out to wide receiver if needed, but still have Devontae Adams, still have MVS on the outside, still have Amari Rogers, Equinemia St. Brown. No longer do you have Alan Lazard. He was technically drafted by the Jet, uh, signed as an undrafted free agent by the Jacksonville Jaguars, so you don't get him in this scenario, but you still have Randall Cobb. So an interesting group of wide receivers with Adams, MVS, Cobb, Rogers, and EQ, um, but Cobb, Rogers, and even to an extent EQ, more slot players. So you look at that outside wide receiver position, really just kind of Adams and MVS. Now Cobb can play out there a bit, EQ can play out there a bit, maybe even Amari can play out there a bit, but um, you know, you're know you kind of a little bit top heavy in that slot wide receiver. Now you could bring back a Geronimo Allison in this scenario. Uh, he's still out there. And I should have mentioned, by the way, you have to have players who are currently in this exercise. They have to be on uh, a current roster throughout the league. So uh, you can't bring back a Jordy Nelson or a Jeff Janis as much as you would like. They have to currently be on a roster. So uh, at Devonta Adams, MVS, Cobb, Rogers, EQ, and then um, again, you could consider Geronimo Moss. And I believe he's still on the lines. I didn't actually technically look that up, but I believe he's still there. Uh, tight end is really interesting. First of all, 
you have a bunch of, you know, more undersized H back type of players. No Robert Tunyon because he was technically signed by the Lions as an undrafted free agent. Uh, you don't have Mercedes Lewis, so you don't really have that blocking tight end. I would be tempted to keep Richard Rodgers here, but technically he's a free agent right now. So you've got Jay Sternberger still, which is a complete unknown. You've got Josiah DeGuara, more of that H-back style tight end. And then you technically have Taysom Hill as well, also playing that H-back role and has done it a really nice job of it. So another player that, you know, could be a, a quarterback with Boyle and, and Love and Rodgers, but, you know, Green Bay in this scenario would actually need him quite a bit more in that H-back role. I know people aren't always a fan of the, the, the Taysom Hill wildcat stuff. Personally, I enjoy it. I think it's creative. I'm excited to see what they do with it this year. I think in small doses, it's better. But I do think as a, a pure H-back and some of the stuff he does on special teams, he has a lot of value. Now they're massively overpaying him for what he brings to the table. That's another discussion for another day, but uh, still an interesting player to add to this roster. Three undersized guys, right? And Sternberger, DeGuara, and, and Taysom Hill, not having that run blocking tight end would be a major issue. Um, and not having a Bobby Tunyon, you know, just a, a high level tight end would be a major issue. So Matt LaFleur would have to make do with less. Offensive line, you really have a, a pretty big embarrassment of rich, uh, riches here. You still have Bakhtiari and Brian Bulaga on the outside at offensive tackle. You have Elton Jenkins at guard. You have Corey Lindsley at center. And then you've got really what amounts to a bunch of interior offensive linemen with some versatility, right? You still have a JC Treader. You have a Josh Myers who could kick inside to guard. You have a John Runyon Jr., Lane Taylor, uh, Royce Newman, Simon Stepaniak. So you've got a, a really nice mix of offensive linemen. You don't really have those pure tackles. So this is where, outside of your starters, I should say, Bakhtiari Bulaga, you still have. But after that, you don't really have a pure tackle. So Elton Jenkins is going to have to be your backup there if anything would happen to the top two. And then you're going to have to either move out like a Royce Newman or a John Runyon Jr. if something happened after that, maybe a Lane Taylor. So you've got some guys with versatility, but I mean, at center, having Corey Lindsley, JC Treader, Josh Myers is ridiculous. Um, again, at least one if you know, at least one of those guys is going to kick probably to guard. Maybe Josh Myers, maybe a, a Treader or a Corey Lindsley could. Uh, but again, a really strong line, uh, offensive line with, with quite a bit of depth. Defensive line, I think you feel a little bit better about, but the names are probably better than the talent. So you kind of have your same defensive line that you have now, but you still have, um, you, you also get back Lawrence Guy, who's had a really nice career in New England, who was a Packers seventh round pick. And then you get back Mike Daniels, which sounds really sexy, but he's not been good the last few seasons at all. So more of a rotational guy. You end up with Kenny Clark, Lawrence Guy, Dean Lowry, Kingsley Kiki, Mike Daniels, TJ Slayton, Montrevious Adams. I built up that line just because I think you can never have enough enough depth. Technically, a Tyler Lancaster you could add in here too if you want to put him in over a Slayton or a Daniels or a Montrevious Adams. You could certainly do so. So a lot of options there, a lot of names, uh, but not a lot of top end names. Adding a Lawrence Guy definitely helps, but you're still looking at Kenny Clark as by far the alpha male of that group. At the edge rusher, you are in trouble. So you still get Rashawn Gary, which is nice. Uh, but then it's what? Kyler Fackrell, Vince Beagle, Jonathan Garvin. And there's not much else. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, Kendall Donerson is not in the league right now. There's just not much else that they've had. You could add a Tipa Nalii um, as a you know undrafted free agent edge rusher to this group, a Delonte Scott if you wanted to, but they just don't have the horses here. So that would be a major major problem with this team. I mean, you'd be really counting on Rashawn Gary and then you know Vince Beagle bouncing back from injury and playing like he did a couple seasons ago. Kyler Fackrell trying to have a good season, or maybe you get a, a, an increase in play from Jonathan Garvin, but not exactly Preston Smith, Zedarius Smith. Uh, Rashawn Gary at the top of this list here. So still get Gary, Fackrell, Beagle, Garvin, but not great. Inside linebacker, a little bit better. You get to bring back Blake Martinez. And I think Bart Martinez and, and Chris Barnes would team really nicely together. You still have a Ty Summers, a Kamal Martin. I only kept those four, but you, you know, of course, could keep, keep an Isaiah McDuffie and Oren Burks if you wanted to as well. Uh, but I'm going to go with Kamal Martin, Ty Summers, Chris Barnes, and Blake Martinez. At corner, uh, pretty much the same with one notable exception. Uh, you get Jair Alexander, you get Eric Stokes, uh, you get Kevin King, Shamar Jean Charles, Josh Jackson. If you wanted to add in a KB Anento here, someone like that, uh, you certainly could. Uh, but you also get Casey Hayward, which is, I know 
you know, he's a little bit past his prime at this point, not maybe the, the best of the best, but a, a really nice option to play in the slot um, alongside Stokes and Jair. Kevin King potentially bumps to that number four corner, which would be, you know, really nice to have that depth at that spot. And then you've got Shamar Jean Charles and Josh Jackson kind of rounding things out. So a pretty nice cornerback group adding in Casey Hayward there. And then at safety, no Adrian Amos, but you do get a Micah Hyde. So uh, just kind of swapping out those two. Darnell Savage as your other. Vernon Scott still. You could add like a Demarius Randall if you wanted to bring him back. Meh, whatever. Um, you know, there's a couple other guys. Uh, Raven Green is where I went here. So Hyde, Savage, Raven Green, and Vernon Scott were my four safeties. Kicker, Mason Crosby punter J.K. Scott, and then long snapper actually went with Clark Harris. Clark Harris was a former seventh round pick, tight end long snapper, who's been a long time long snapper for the Bengals. A little bit up there in age, but I think if I had to choose somebody to long snap for my team today, I'm actually going to go with Clark Harris. So just to recap really quick, Aaron Rodgers, Tim Boyle, Jordan Love at quarterback, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Jamal Williams, Ty Montgomery at running back, Devontae Adams, MVS, Randall Cobb, Amari Rodgers, and EQ at wide receiver, Sternberger, DeGuara, and I guess Taysom Hill at tight end slash H-back, Bakhtiari and Bulaga at tackle, Elton Jenkins, Josh Myers, John Runyon Jr., Lane Taylor, Royce Newman, Simon Stepaniak at guard slash offensive line, Coy Lindsley and J.C. Treader at center, Kenny Clark, Lawrence Guy, Dean Lowry, Kingsley Kiki, Mike Daniels, TJ Slayton, and Montrevious Adams on the defensive line, Rashawn Gary, Kyler Fackrell, Vince Beagle, uh, Jonathan Garvin at edge, Blake Martinez, Chris Barnes, Ty Summers, Kamal Martin at linebacker, Jair Alexander, um, Stokes, Casey Hayward, Kevin King, Shamar Jean Charles, Josh Jackson at corner, Micah Hyde, Darnell Savage, Raven Green, Vernon Scott at safety, Crosby, J.K. Scott, Clark Harris on special teams. That's your 53-man roster. You feel pretty good about it. I mean, in this scenario, Aaron Rodgers has to play for you. He can't go anywhere else. So that's a nice little added bonus. Uh, Good offensive line. You're really missing. I mean, tight end and and edge rusher, I think, is where you're really having some question marks. And and just pass rush in general. You know, can Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary generate enough pass rush? Because I'm not sure the the group of Mike Daniels, Kingsley Kiki, Vince Beagle, Kyler Fackrell alongside of those two is going to do anything. It's going to be very, uh, you know, it's going to be the defensive coordinator that's going to be forced to really generate pressure with exotic blitzes because they just don't have the horses to rush the passer. So pass rush tight ends, I think are the big missing pieces there, but hope you enjoyed this very lame and, you know, mostly not relevant exercise. But again, that's the way my weird mind works. And if nothing else, you get to look at uh, some callbacks to some old Packer players. And uh, if I missed anyone, If there's anyone that maybe an old undrafted free agent that I forgot about, maybe a player that you would have put on here instead of one of the ones I did, uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. Um, Definitely tough to go back and look through the last, like, what, 12 years of uh, plus of players where you you know potentially could have missed on someone. So definitely within the realm of possibility. So if I missed on someone, hit me up in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to do so. Make sure to like, uh, just because it'd be the nice thing to do. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.